Okay, I want to share something with you here real quick for about 10 minutes, okay? So if you got 10 minutes, listen up. I had a guy tell me one time, he said, uh, Hey, Coach East, you're always talking about the devil, you know. Why are you trying to fight something that you don't have to? Well, uh, man, oh man, oh man. Uh, I'm not putting this person down, don't get me wrong, but it just, it just shows me a, a, a lack of people understanding the Word of God. You know, let me, let me tell you something. This, this, the Bible right here is the infallible and inspired and errant Word of God. People think, man, it's just a history book. It's just a book. You know, it's not. You, you name me another book. Name me another book that's, that's persevered for thousands of years. Still here, still there. I mean, for us to, to live by. I mean, man, I'm telling you, it is the Word of God. And, and we've got to listen to the Word of God. And the, and the Word of God talks about the devil. Now, the devil used to be named Lucifer. And Lucifer used to be the highest and most beautiful angel in heaven. Uh, the Bible said that he was covered with jewels and the glory of God would shine off the, the jewels on his body and, and just, you know, the, the array, the, the aura from the, 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 the jewels would just, I mean, manifest and permeate heaven, man. He was beautiful. He was beautiful. He said he's in charge of the music in heaven. But one day he decided, man, you know, God's getting all the glory and I'm doing all the work. He said, I'm going to rebel. And he talked to a third of the angels. And they're rebelling with him. And the Bible says in Revelation 12, it said that he was cast out of heaven, him and a third of the angels. And his job ever since then, well, his first job was to, to devour, according to Revelation 12, to devour the Son of God, Jesus Christ, when he was born of woman. That didn't happen. He's still trying to get back at God, though, for throwing him down. He can't get to Jesus. Jesus whipped him. Jesus came up out of the grave, even though uh, he died. He, he was resurrected. By the way, name me another deity that's ever been resurrected from the grave. Name me another deity that's alive. Jesus won the victory. But we can win the victory, too. But let me tell you something. That, see, the devil couldn't whip God. He couldn't beat Jesus down. He couldn't keep Jesus in the grave. So what's the next thing he does? He tries to cripple us. He tries to cripple Christians, those who are saved. Now, if you're lost here without Jesus Christ, you're a lost man. You're already on the devil's side. You say, I never bump into Jesus, Coach Jesus. I know because you're walking the same direction he is. You, you get saved and you start turning around and you're walking against him. You're going to run into him. I promise you on that. The devil's alive. Lucifer, Satan, Whatever you want to call him, he's there. But the Bible says that he doesn't, you know, come arrayed in beauty and in light. Uh, I mean, excuse me. The Bible says he comes arrayed in beauty and light. He doesn't come as a monster or a person in a red suit because that would scare you away. See, he comes in beauty and light. He wants to fit in so you're not afraid of him that you don't even recognize him. Well, I'll read some scriptures to you about the devil this morning and uh, see if you can figure this out. Trust the Word. Don't trust me. Just read the Word of God. Jesus, or excuse me, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 5, the last part there, Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself therefore into the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Man, what a promise. You got a care this morning? Give it to God. You know why? Because God cares for you. Verse 8. Be sober. Be thinking right. Be, you know, because when you're drunk, you don't think right. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be aware. That's what he means. Be aware. Because your adversary, your foe, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You say there's no devil? I say there is a devil. I say there is a devil, and he's trying to find somebody he can get today. If you're an unbeliever, you're not a Christian, you're walking with him. You're on his side. He's got you. But if you are a believer, you're going the opposite direction, you're running into him, and you're having some problems. He wants to cripple you. He wants to hurt you. See, that's the only way you can get back with God. I couldn't beat Jesus, so I'm going to beat up God's people. I'm going to get even. I'm going to get them. That's who I'm going to get. I'm going to get them. And so then, 
we got to realize that we are fighting against Satan. But there is a promise from heaven that will help us defeat our adversary. In James chapter 4, beginning in verse 7, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Amen. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, and, and be not double-minded. Be afflicted, be and mourn and weep, and your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to humble uh, to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. James says there's a devil. It says we gotta resist the devil. If you resist him, he will flee from you. The Bible says. At the name of Jesus, that every knee should bow above the earth and on the earth and below the earth. In the name of Jesus, Satan will flee. He has to. Now the devil can't be at all places at one time. He's not like God. God's everywhere in one place. He's omnipresent. He's every place at all times. The devil's not like it. He can only be in one place. He has a little of cohorts where a third of the angels fell with him and he has a hierarchy of angels and they mess with you. The more and the deeper you walk with God, uh, the, the bigger, uh, the, 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 the higher the rank of the devil is going to come. It may be a lieutenant or a colonel or a major or a general that's going to come and attack you that's, that's in the devil's army. You see, when you start walking with God, he doesn't like that because he knows that he has lost you. So the only way he can... Get even with God's make you stumble and fall. So it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But the secret is down in the first part of verse 7. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Christian, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to reading the word. Submit yourself to prayer. Submit yourself to fasting. Submit yourself to soul winning. Submit yourself to sharing your testimony. Submit yourself to being faithful to a good church. Submit yourself to a pastor and ministers that's doing all they can to reach out. Submit yourself to the good things of God. And then when you resist the devil, he's got to flee from you. The devil is alive. Not for long. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20, it says that in the after the great white throne judgment, or really before the great white throne judgment, I'm sorry, he will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. He'll never get out. He's whipped. He knows he's whipped. He knows he's lost the battle. And he's going to lose the war in the end. And you need to know that. Submit yourself unto God. Draw near to God. And he'll draw near to you. If you're not bumping into the devil, more than likely you're not living for God. If you're not bumping into the devil, you may, you may be lost. But if he's attacking you, attack him. Jesus asked his disciples, he said, Who do men say that I am? The disciples said, Well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're another, uh, another prophet. But who do you say I am? Jesus asked. And John, I mean, excuse me, Peter, Simon Peter said, They are Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. And he said, upon that thinking, upon that faith, he said, I'm going to build my church. And he said, the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The church has turned into a wimpy little organization of dull, bored, dried up old Christians, no matter what your age. We become weak, we're on defense. I get tired of defending my faith. I get tired of people saying, well, why are you a Christian? Why are you doing this? Why are you? My question is, why aren't you not a Christian? Why are you not going to church? Why are you not praying? Why are you not fasting? Why are you not giving to the church? Why are you not uh, helping the poor? Why are you not helping the, 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 the suppressed and the oppressed people? We need to be on the offense, not the defense. I'm tired of asking questions. Well, why, well, well coaches, why do you even bother? My question is, why don't you bother? He says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Bible tells me that the church shall be on the offense, not the defense. We will be kicking the devil's butt until the devil kicking our butt. And you can do that if you submit to God and draw near to Him. Greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. And yes, the world does belong to the devil. The Bible teaches us that. that the powers, the principalities of the air. That's what we fight against. It's, the, it's spiritual warfare. It's the evil things. And he is the co, uh, he is the leader. He, he's our 
the cohort of it all. He's the one that's done it. It's the devil. And we've let him whip us in the church. He let us, we've let him whip us collectively and individually. I'm here to tell you today, church, I'm here to tell you today, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, get on the offense. When some non-believer or some someone who uh, whatever you want to call him, uh, you know, anti-Christian, anti-Christ, anti-church, anti-Bible, anti, when they ask you a question, turn it back on them. Coach Jesus, why, why do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Why don't you believe in the Holy Spirit? Coach Jesus, will you, will you believe there's a God? Why don't you believe there's a God? He created all this. You think this comes from the Big Bang Theory? You're crazy. If you think this comes from some two rocks rubbing together somewhere and, 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 and form some goo and some amoeba form out of it, come up out of that and through there, for we come out of tadpoles and frogs and monkeys and apes and baboons. And I know some of you may look like that, but by golly, you didn't come from that. You were created by God. God said He took the earth. And created man. Quit answering questions. Quit defending your faith. It's just the devil. And start being on the offense. I'm asking you right now. Why don't you go to church? Why don't you read the Bible? Why don't you tithe? Why don't you support ministry? I guarantee there's a lot of you out there. When, when the proverbial uh, stink hits the fan. You're the first one that runs the church with your hand out. Can you help me with some food? Can you help me with my medicine? Can you help me with my diapers for my baby? Can you do this? Can I? Can you, can you, can you, can you? Yes, we can. The Bible says also it's blessed to more blessed to give than receive it. You're receiving, you get your hand out the time. Why don't you give? Why don't you give to the church? You don't mind spending $60 on night to go out and eat and have cocktails. Why don't you give some out to the church so we can continue to help you and your friends and your family and everyone else? Oh, you may be saying, brother, you're being a smart like No, I'm just telling you I'm on the offense and not the defense. I'm not defending my faith anymore. I'm not defending my God. I'm not defending the Holy Spirit. I'm not defending Jesus because they don't need it. They're powerful enough. They can do what they want to. I'm not defending nothing anymore. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. There is a devil. He fights me every day. He hates me. He hates me. He despises me. Maybe you're the same way because I'm doing this teaching. I don't know. But I know He despises me. He hates my family. He hates my church. He hates my Christian brothers and sisters. He wants us to trip up and fall just like I did two or three years ago. He was having a heyday and joy in a party because I did mess up and I got away from God. But I'm back. And I'm serving Him. I'm serving God, not the devil. I'm serving God. And I'm saying that the devil is a defeated foe according to the Word of God. He's going to live in a place where he don't even have a, can't even lock the door. The Bible says that Jesus is going to have the keys to hell. He can't, even, he can't even lock his own door and get away from it. The devil's real. And he's powerful. But thank God, my God is real and more powerful. God bless you. Have a good day.